every decision we ever make. Chaos soon come. Welcome back everyone, it's Charlie. This is gonna be my new Venom 2 video for the Toxin character. A lot of you saw that big Toxin teaser that they're setting up during the Venom 2 movie, so we'll break it all down. There's a whole bunch of Easter eggs, and obviously this is all heading in a very specific direction. If you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the videos. There's gonna be a lot of Venom stuff happening in the next couple of months. The movie's coming out in September. Many, many Spider-Man related movies coming in the next year between Spider-Man 3, No Way Home, and the Morbius movie. Also, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse 2. But during the Venom 2 trailer this week, it was revealed that Stephen Graham, this actor here, who some of you may recognize from the many, many British shows that he's been on or some of the larger movies, he was confirmed to be someone that they're referring to as Detective Mulligan. So longtime Venom and Carnage comic book fans freaked out because Detective Mulligan is Patrick Mulligan, aka the Toxin character from the comics. If you're not a big comic book reader, he's the next symbiote to spawn from Venom's line, and he's even more powerful than Venom and Carnage put together. So in the way that Venom spawns the Carnage symbiote, and he bonds to Cletus Cassidy, Carnage spawns the Toxin symbiote he bonds to Patrick Mulligan. So Stephen Graham's character is a much bigger part of their Marvel Spider-Man world building in all these Venom movies than you would have thought of when they first announced that he was joining the movie. When they first cast him, they didn't say what he was doing or who he was playing. But just talking about their grand plan for what they're building up to, you may remember a couple years ago when the first Venom movie came out before they'd officially announced any plans for crossing over Venom with Tom Holland's MCU Spider-Man, everyone asked, will you do Carnage next? Will you do the other major symbiotes? This is the video clip of them talking about doing every single one of the major iterations of the Venom symbiote. And when I say iterations of Venom, they're talking about all the symbiotes that Marvel introduced in the comics after they introduced the concept of the Venom symbiote. One of, I think, our great hopes for future films is other articulations of Venom. So when the producers say that they're trying to do all the major versions of the symbiotes eventually, as you see Carnage in the Venom 2 trailer, and then you see them introduce the detective character called Patrick Mulligan, it's them just executing that plan. Like, oh, clearly we're going to be doing Toxin next. I think we all expected this eventually, but because they killed off all the other symbiotes in the first Venom movie, and they were changing the Venom origin story, at least so we believed, most of us were just waiting to see how close to the comic story this would all wind up being. I think a lot of their problems and issues with that were solved when Sony and Marvel made their new deal for sharing Tom Holland's Spider-Man and doing the new Spider-Man movies. Now, per that deal, Sony can reference pretty much anything they want from the MCU movies. That's why you're seeing all this Daily Bugle stuff happening during this, even though it's the Tobey Maguire Daily Bugle logo. So even though it seems a little bit weird, they'll probably fix a lot of that stuff before Venom 2 comes out in theaters. They don't have to tiptoe around the concept of Spider-Man anymore. And even though I did include that clip in my trailer video I posted yesterday of Andy Serkis, the director, talking about the way they treated the Tom Holland Spider-Man character, the way he says that they approached it, at least at the beginning of this film, is that when the events of the movie pick up, neither Eddie Brock, Carnage, or any of the other big characters are aware that Spider-Man exists. So that does raise some questions about the timeline and the way they're treating this relative to the MCU movies. I think it's helpful to think of it in a multiverse context. But I think because they want to use Tom Holland's Spider-Man and they want it to be the same version of Spider-Man that's experiencing all these things across the multiverse or the Spider-Verse, however you want to think about it, I think they're trying to say that Tom Holland's Spider-Man will become the Spider-Man of this Earth. Although because Sony wants to do as many spin-offs as possible, we could see any future versions of Spider-Man wind up inhabiting this version of Earth. There's so many versions of Spider-Man, I am sure Sony wants to do every single one of them. The other bonus, too, is that they just got done doing some really solid work with the Venom character inside the Marvel Universe. If you haven't been reading the Venom comics the past few years, Donny Cates has actually been trying to take the Venom character to a very cosmic Avengers Endgame type of place that's separate from Peter Parker Spider-Man. Like, Spider-Man will always be part of Venom's story. They're fundamentally linked as characters, but they've been trying to do really cool Venom stories that don't necessarily depend on Spider-Man. That was what the whole Noel God of the Symbiote storyline was about. The Toxin character is another example of that. His origin story does involve the Spider-Man character, but because Toxin is the spawn of Carnage and Patrick Mulligan is its host, it has this crazy relationship with Venom and Carnage because Venom is kind of like its grandfather. So they're like this weird dysfunctional family that you can do without having to do a ton of Spider-Man. 
Like, you could do a really good toxin story without having to include Tom Holland's Spider-Man at every turn. That being said, it does sound like Sony is planning for more Tom Holland Spider-Man crossover, not less, as they go along. Like, the crossovers will only escalate as they do more movies. Just based on the talks and Easter eggs in the trailer footage here, what it seems like Sony might wind up doing is building up to a version of the Spider-Man Maximum Carnage storyline and just change it so that it's not just Spider-Man and Venom teaming up to stop Carnage, it's both Tom Holland's Spider-Man and Tom Hardy's Venom, both the Toms, teaming up to fight both Carnage and Toxin. Like, Toxin becomes one of the new villains of Venom 3, theoretically. Although there are some big twists with Toxin's character that differentiate it from the Carnage symbiote. Like, they're fundamentally different symbiotes, even though he's the spawn of Carnage. So I'll explain that in a second. Mulligan's scenes in the trailer make it seem like he was one of the detectives who was initially responsible for arresting Cletus Cassidy when he was first locked up during the events of the first Venom movie. But in the trailer, they show this article in the Daily Bugle that may be from Eddie Brock. It's not clear who wrote the article about all these hidden victims of Cletus Cassidy that were never found. Like he killed way more people and then they arrested him, but they never found the bodies. And it just seems like Patrick Mulligan is really pissed off about that. And you have Eddie going around trying to assemble this article to find out where the bodies are hidden. And Andy Serkis, the director, did his own commentary on the trailer footage and sort of clarified what's going on between Eddie and Cletus when the movie picks up. He says that Cletus will only talk to Eddie Brock about this missing bodies case, so he begins to visit him frequently in prison, setting up their relationship. And as Cletus narrates the trailer, you can tell he's kind of obsessed with Eddie and begins sending him handwritten notes written in his blood. That's actually his blood that he's using to write those. So when he's touching it because the symbiote is bonded to him, that means the symbiote is ingesting some of Cletus Cassidy's blood, which sort of sets the stage, helps foreshadow the creation of the Carnage symbiote and it bonding with Cletus Cassidy. Even though we don't really see that happen during the trailer footage, you just see it sort of bursting out, manifesting from him when they have him on death row trying to execute him. They use that one is the loneliest number song and Cletus's speech about leaving things behind. So everyone is thinking that that's a teaser for the Venom symbiote spawning while he's in prison. Then the Carnage symbiote gets left behind and winds up bonding to Cletus Cassidy. And that's probably their way of doing the classic Carnage origin story from the comics. But also because of all the toxin Easter eggs, one is the loneliest number, two can be as bad as one. Music could also be a reference to foreshadowing the eventual Carnage symbiote spawning the toxin symbiote and him becoming just as big a problem as Carnage, if not more. Then Venom having to deal with two of them instead of just Carnage. Although the relationship between those three symbiotes is very complicated. Also that two can be as bad as one song is meant to be a reference for Carnage's girlfriend Shriek in Ravencroft here. She has this sonic scream ability that makes her very powerful against the symbiotes because how do you hurt the symbiotes? You use certain sonic frequencies. That's why Spider-Man uses the church bells to get rid of the symbiote during the classic Venom origin story. But Toxin's history is that he's a relatively new character. He wasn't introduced till 2004 during a Venom vs. Carnage storyline. So Circle of Life, the Carnage symbiote realizes that it had been pregnant and was about to spawn another symbiote. But it hated the idea of Toxin before it was ever born because it was his prophecy that the thousandth iteration of their lineage, the Toxin symbiote, would become way more powerful than any of them before. So Carnage hates the idea of Toxin even more than it hates Venom. What a happy family, because you have to remember that Venom is kind of like Toxin's grandfather. It made a plan to kill Toxin as soon as it spawned it, so it's like killing your child right after it's born. But the spawning process left him so weak that he couldn't do anything about it. But because Patrick Mulligan just happens to be nearby, it puts the Toxin symbiote into him as sort of a temporary holding vessel, saying that he'll come back when he regains his strength to kill both of them. So Carnage didn't give Mulligan the Toxin symbiote because he cared about him or he trusted him. He was using him more like a tool, like a plaything. Then when Carnage does become strong enough, a bunch of other characters stop him from killing Toxin. Venom actually stops him, hoping that he can train Toxin to fight Spider-Man and Carnage. He's also responsible for naming the new symbiote Toxin. He calls him Toxin because his symbiote smells poisonous to the other symbiotes but he has all their abilities just turned up to 11. So he can do all the same things that Carnage can do, that Venom can do, but just more. Later, it's revealed that Mulligan has a strong enough personality and sense of morality to show Carnage mercy when they fight. So Venom and Carnage then realize that it's possible Toxin could eventually turn good and team up with Spider-Man against them, which obviously they don't want. So then Venom and Carnage try to team up to kill Toxin. Like I said, those three symbiotes relationship is very complicated. 
Eventually, Peter Parker Spider-Man does help Toxin during the fight, realizing what's going on, and then gives Mulligan the same version of the Uncle Ben speech. With great power comes great responsibility, and Mulligan walks away spending his early days as Toxin trying to teach the symbiote how to be good. It's a little bit what you saw at the end of the first Venom movie, with Eddie trying to teach the Venom symbiote how to be good. The difference is that the Toxin symbiote is essentially a child, like it's a newborn child. Remember Vision in Avengers Age of Ultron when he was joking about being born yesterday? He's kind of like a child, but also a god at the same time. That's basically what the Toxin symbiote is. It's not a god, it's just way more powerful than both Venom and Carnage put together. So Mulligan spends most of his time fighting the Toxin symbiote's baser urges to just go completely crazy on everyone. So if you're a big fan of Stephen Graham, it does sound like they will eventually try to do the Toxin origin story. I don't know how close it'll be to the comics, but hopefully they'll include some big Easter eggs and we'll see some Tom Holland Spider-Man in there. But as it seems like they're building up to a maximum Carnage crossover storyline with Tom Holland Spider-Man, they might save his origin story for that movie, if that's going to be Venom 3 or a future movie after that. There were a lot of you I saw that had theories about Venom and Carnage teaming up in a future movie against Toxin. They could always wind up doing that as well. Because I think the whole idea is they want to keep the Carnage character around because he just serves as a really good villain to contrast the Venom character against. If Venom's going to be an anti-hero, you need somebody that's even worse, and that is the Carnage character through and through. We'll get more Venom 2 trailers in the next couple of months, so hopefully they'll give us some more footage of the Mulligan character, and if we see any more Toxin Easter eggs or Easter eggs for other symbiotes and storylines, or even Tom Holland Spider-Man Easter eggs, of course I'll do videos for that stuff. But if you have any questions about Toxin or the other symbiotes or a big Tom Holland Spider-Man crossover, just leave them in the comments below. There's a whole bunch of Marvel stuff coming up. My Marvel Loki episodes will start posting soon in a couple weeks, so make sure you have alerts enabled so you don't miss any of those. Everyone click here for my full Venom 2 trailer video and click here for my brand new Marvel Phase 4 trailer video and Eternals trailer. Thank you so much for watching. Everyone stay safe. I'll see you guys tonight.